Now this is a GPU. This is one of the most advanced GPUs in the world, but this is a gamer GPU. But you and I know that this is what a GPU looks like. This is one GPU. Ladies and gentlemen, DGX GPU. The back of this GPU is the NVLink spine, and it's right here. This is an NVLink spine and it connects 72 GPUs to each other. This is a electrical mechanical miracle. NVIDIA, the leading provider of graphics processing units, has recently announced the launch of its new DGX GPU, a groundbreaking chip designed to accelerate artificial intelligence and high performance computing workloads. This new GPU is expected to significantly impact NVIDIA's stock price, as it is likely to drive increased demand for the company's products and services. The DGX GPU is NVIDIA's most powerful GPU to date, offering unprecedented performance and efficiency for AI and HPC applications. The transceivers makes it possible for us to drive the entire length in copper, and as a result, this switch, NVLink switch, driving the NVLink spine in copper makes it possible for us to save 20 kilowatts in one rack. 20 kilowatts could now be used for processing. Just an incredible achievement. So this is the, the NVLink spine. And even this is not big enough. Even this is not big enough for AI factories, so we have to connect it all together with very high-speed networking. Well, we have two types of networking. We have InfiniBand, which has been used uh, in supercomputing and AI factories all over the world. And it is growing incredibly fast for us. However, not every data center can handle InfiniBand because they've already invested their ecosystem in Ethernet for too long. And so what we've done is we've brought the capabilities of InfiniBand to the Ethernet architecture, which is incredibly hard. Ethernet was designed for high average throughput. Because every single node, every single computer is connected to a different person on the internet, and most of the communications is the data center with somebody on the other side of the internet. However, deep learning and AI factories, the GPUs are not communicating with people on the internet. They're communicating with each other because they're all, co they're collecting partial products, and they have to reduce it, and then redistribute it chunks of partial products, reduction, redistribution. That traffic is incredibly bursty. And it is not the average throughput that matters. It's the last arrival that matters. It's whoever gives me the answer last. The chip is based on NVIDIA's new Hopper architecture, which features several innovations that enable it to deliver significantly higher performance than previous generations of GPUs. Key innovations include a new tensor core design, which accelerates matrix operations, and a new transformer engine, which accelerates the training of large language models. These technological advancements make the DGX GPU a powerhouse for demanding computational tasks, setting a new standard in the industry. In AI, the DGX GPU could enable the development of more sophisticated and powerful models, leading to significant breakthroughs in various domains. Enhanced capabilities in training large language models could improve natural language processing applications, such as chatbots, translation services, and sentiment analysis. Faster and more efficient processing can lead to advancements in computer vision, crucial for applications like autonomous vehicles and security systems. Okay, Ethernet has no provision for that. And so there are several things that we had to create. We created an end-to-end -end architecture so that the, the NIC and the switch can communicate. And we applied four different technologies to make this possible. Number one, NVIDIA has the world's most advanced RDMA. And so now we have the ability to have a network level RDMA for Ethernet that is incredibly great. Number two, we have congestion control. The switch does telemetry at all times incredibly fast. And whenever the NICs are sending too much information, we can tell them to back off so that it doesn't create hotspots. Number three, adaptive routing. Ethernet needs to transmit and receive in order. We see congestions or we see uh, ports that are not currently being used, 
irrespective of the ordering, we will send it to the available ports and Bluefield on the other end reorders it so that it comes back in order. That adaptive routing, incredibly powerful. And then lastly, noise isolation. There's more than one model being trained or something causes the last arrival to end up too late. It really slows down the training. Well, overall, remember, you have built a $5 billion or $3 billion data center, and you're using this for training. If the training time was 20% longer, the $5 billion data center is effectively like a $6 billion data center. So the cost impact is quite high. Ethernet with Spectrum X basically allows us to improve the performance so much that the network is basically free. And so this is really quite an achievement. We're very, we have a whole pipeline of Ethernet products behind us. This is Spectrum X800. Improved AI models can also enhance the capabilities of robots in manufacturing, healthcare, and other sectors, leading to more efficient and intelligent systems. In HPC, the DGX GPU can revolutionize how researchers approach complex simulations and analyses. Accelerated computations can shorten the time required to identify potential drug candidates, expediting the development of new medications. More efficient processing enables detailed climate simulations, aiding in the prediction and understanding of climate change impacts. Faster simulations can lead to the discovery of new materials with desirable properties for use in various industries. The release of the DGX GPU is expected to have a positive impact on NVIDIA's stock price. The chip is likely to drive increased demand for NVIDIA's products and services as businesses and organizations adopt the latest AI and HPC technologies. This surge in demand could lead to higher revenue and profits for NVIDIA, directly benefiting its stock price. Additionally, the DGX GPU reinforces NVIDIA's position as a leader in the GPU market. This technological achievement is expected to attract the attention of investors and analysts, generating positive sentiment and driving up the company's stock price. It is uh, 51.2 terabits per second. The next one coming is 512 Radix is one year from now, 512 Radix, and that's called Spectrum X800 Ultra. And the one after that is X1600. But the important idea is this, X800, is designed for tens of thousands of GPUs. X800 Ultra is designed for hundreds of thousands of GPUs. And X1600 is designed for millions of GPUs. The days of millions of GPU data centers are coming. And the reason for that is very simple. Of course, we want to train much larger models. But very importantly, in the future, almost every interaction you have with the internet or with a computer will likely have a generative AI running in the cloud somewhere. And that generative AI is working with you, interacting with you, generating videos or images or text, or maybe a digital human. And so you're interacting with your computer almost all the time. And there's always a generative AI connected to that. Some of it is on-prem, some of it is on your device, and a lot of it could be in the cloud. These generative AIs will also do a lot of reasoning capability. Instead of just one-shot answers, they might iterate on answers so that it improves the quality of the answer before they give it to you. And so the amount of generation we're going to do in the future is going to be extraordinary. Let me talk about what's next. The next wave of AI is physical AI. AI that understands the laws of physics. They have to, of course, have excellent cognitive capabilities so they can understand us, understand what we asked, and perform the tasks. Of course, when I say robotics, there's a humanoid robotics that's usually the representation of that. But that's not at all true. Everything is going to be robotic. All of the factories will be robotic. The factories will orchestrate robots, and those robots will be building products that are robotic. Robots interacting with robots, building products that are robotic. Well. In order for us to do that, we need to make some breakthroughs. First, we're going to create platforms for each type of robotic systems. One for robotic factories and warehouses. One for robots that manipulate things. One for robots that move. And one for uh, robots that are humanoid. 
And so each one of these robotic pl robotics platform is like almost everything else we do. A computer, acceleration libraries, and pre-trained models. Computers, acceleration libraries, pre-trained models. And we test everything, we train everything, and integrate everything inside Omniverse, where Omniverse is where robots learn how to be robots. Now, of course, the ecosystem of robotic warehouses is really, really complex. It takes a lot of companies, a lot of tools, a lot of technology to build a modern warehouse. And warehouses are increasingly robotic. One of these days will be fully robotic. Now let's talk about factories. Factories has a completely different ecosystem. A robotic factory is designed with three computers. Train the AI on NVIDIA AI. You have the robot running on the PLC systems uh, for orchestrating the factories. And then you, of course, simulate everything inside Omniverse. Well, the robotic arm and the robotic AMRs are also the same way, three computer systems. And we provide the computer, the acceleration layers, and pre-trained uh, pre AI models. We've connected NVIDIA Manipulator and NVIDIA Omniverse with Siemens, the world's leading industrial automation software and systems company. This is really a fantastic partnership, and they're working on factories all over the world. And that's the factory, the robots inside, and of course, all the products are going to be robotics. So there are two very high volume robotics products. One, of course, is the self driving car or cars that have a great deal of autonomous capability. NVIDIA, again, builds the entire stack. Next year, we're going to go to production with the Mercedes fleet, and after that, in 2026, the JLR fleet. The next high volume robotics product that's going to be manufactured by robotic factories with robots inside will likely be humanoid robots. And this has great progress in recent years in both the cognitive capability because of foundation models and also the world understanding capability that we're in the process of developing. I'm really excited about this area because obviously the easiest robot to adapt into the world are humanoid robots because we built the world for us. We also have the most amount of data to train these robots than other types of robots because we have the same uh, physique. NVIDIA's ability to stay ahead of the competition by continually innovating ensures its dominance in the market. While the prospects for the DGX GPU are promising, there are potential risks that could affect NVIDIA's stock price. One risk is that the DGX GPU may not be as successful as expected. If the chip fails to live up to its hype, or if it encounters technical issues, it could lead to a decline in demand for NVIDIA's products and services. Another risk is intensified competition from other GPU manufacturers. Companies like AMD and Intel are investing heavily in the development of new GPUs and could pose a threat to NVIDIA's market share. If competitors release comparable or superior products, it could impact NVIDIA's dominance and stock price. Overall, the release of the DGX GPU is a positive development for NVIDIA. The chip is expected to drive increased demand for the company's products and services, leading to higher revenue and profits. This, in turn, could boost NVIDIA's stock price. However, potential risks, such as market acceptance and competition, should be carefully considered by investors. Despite these risks, the DGX GPU represents a significant technological advancement that positions NVIDIA well for future growth in the AI and HPC markets.